Andrea. Evan, hi, hi, hi. Let me just make it a little bigger. Where is the? Oh, there we go. Full screen. Okay, you're in. Good. Um, quick question for you. How how um, how long ago did you receive the link, the invite? Oh, just uh, well, I was uh, looking on my com iPad. I was a little distracted. I can tell you right now, though. Um, because uh, the, the reason why the, time. the reason why I ask is because yeah. um, uh, just the lag time between myself and my emails going out and stuff like that. Um, okay. everyone, everyone, everyone's internet has been uh, kind of like wonky from the storm. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But, I find I found that it, uh, with my um, sending out text messages, a couple didn't go through, and then same here. Said, so yeah, I, I think that's what it's from. All right, this says eleven oh eight. Okay. Yeah. I was, it was a few, so, a few minutes ago. Okay. Okay. All righty. So there you know. There you go. Whoops. Okay. So we had quite an interesting morning. I don't oh, know. Yeah. If you the, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what, what happened? The, the mirror in the little downstairs bathroom fell last night. I heard a big boom. Uh, I thought he had fallen or something. I was downstairs, but the mirror that's been hanging there since we moved in fell down. It, it knocked the soap over, and then it hit the uh, t uh, the faucet, the tap for the hot water. Turned the hot water on. The hot oh, water was running all night, <laughs> and uh, fortunately. Oh, wow. Went down to the little room where the skates are. Not a big thing, but it was just, and the mirror didn't even break. It was just one of those funny um, chain of events. So uh, that really is. Did it? Didn't you have a neighbor who, um, what they went on like vacation and their house turned into like an ice waterfall or something yeah, like that? Yes, yes, that was when Diva was a kid, I think. That is so, I mean, it's not funny, but yeah. it's really funny. <laughs> it, well, it is. I mean, you have, to, well, you have to laugh at everything, you know. Uh, yeah. Otherwise, you get upset. But it did make me laugh. I was like, how in the world did one hit the other and then the other and then. That is crazy. Uh, it's really funny. It is. It is crazy. All because it was a, they had put in a screw that was too short. And it managed oh. to hold for, you know, however many years, 30 years. And then, and then that was the end of it. <laughs> and then it slipped beyond the screw? No, the screw pulled out. Oh, the screw pulled out. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah. That's and so funny. And the mirror fell down. Fortunately, the mirror didn't break. That's why I say it really wasn't uh, a catastrophe. It was just a, a shock. And Deaver went to take a shower and he said, why, do we ha why don't I have any hot water? Yeah. <laughs> so we thought the boiler had, you know, broken us like oh geez another couple thousand dollar replacement but no this was an easy fix i um i just uh got another small spool of uh hanging wire and i'm so careful with uh how i how i wire my paintings now because do you remember fred and susan the uh, uh older couple from new york city oh yes 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 i do i do so they bought that massive painting of the blue chair with the violin and the boots. Like that's every yeah. still like painting I've ever done. Um, and so they bought it and they hung it right over their bed. It was like their prized possession. And I no. had to varnish it. So I go in and I go to take it off the wall and the wire in the back completely rusted out. I mean, it was oh my like, goodness. it was dust. I, Andrea, I mean, I touched it with like a feather and the whole thing snapped right off the wall <laughs> and when I, when I put the wire on it was brand new I mean so now yeah. I use I use um rust-free uh picture wire but man that would have come yeah. down right on top of their heads when they're oh, no. <laughs> and they're an old couple it wouldn't take much to you know no. to do them in oh it my would, word that's it would have been like terrible. some weird novel um yeah well so it, you were meant to be there at that moment I guess to save them Seriously, that could have been, honestly, that would have been bad. It would fall right on their foreheads. <laughs> oh, that was terrible. But um, oh, I had some, uh, had some cool thoughts with the painting. Um, okay, I, which one? So right, right before our Zoom call, I thought of the tuna catch, uh, the painting by Soroya. And oh, okay. take a look at that um, okay. in relation to Evan and the boat. Okay. 
So um, I just wanted to, wanted to quickly say that the, the painting is looking really, really cool. Like that tree, you should, you should be painting in addition to everything we're working on right now, like people and still life objects. But that tree is, it's really, it's, it's beautiful and it really came naturally out of your hands. Like, yeah. do you ever, you ever see someone paint a tree and it kind of feels like a filler? Like it's like a, they're painting the tree because it's in the composition that has to be there. But oh, okay. Yes. The way that the trunk is so gnarled and stuff like that, like, um, I don't know, something about your handling and I'm also thinking of like your uh, watercolor series with like sunflowers and irises, like there's mm -hmm. something with your handling that lends itself to, to that, like it's, the, the tree is really cool looking, so that surprised me. Oh, I, uh, that's all I really worked on. Um, I worked on it yesterday a little, and I think I might have worked on the boat a tiny bit, but I didn't want to do too much because when you don't have uh, what you're painting in front of you, then you, I start to get in trouble. Mm -hmm. you know, I add things that I think is what it is, and then it just m creates a bigger problem. I, yeah, I know what you're saying, and um, I just think you, you pushed it along so nicely. Like, honestly, I looked at it, and I was like, oh, I want to head over to the house one day when Evan's not there and just work on the tree. Uh, oh, you should. Because, yeah, I'm, I'm inspired yeah, by why that. Why not? Oh, good. Um, I was, my thought was maybe I should just leave it alone at this point, because I really didn't do much here, and I didn't do much here, and I thought maybe, maybe this should, I, I should, well, what do you think? Should I just leave it the way it is with this being uh, the area most worked and this kind of just not as yeah. finished? I kind of like it fading out on either side. Yeah, um, okay. okay yeah, ahead. so I, I, I would definitely like, I hold on to that and I yeah. we'll definitely we'll see keep it for a while. Yeah. Yes, because, yeah. Because again, that middle section, it almost feels like a Japanese um, ink pr like uh, scroll where they have those like really neat like they're not bonsai, but they look like bonsai trees with those like awesome gnarled shapes. Um, it has that feel to it right now. Okay. So. Oh, good. Good. Well, that's good. Yeah, well, I think uh, yeah, for the most part, it's it's coming along okay. I don't know if I'll actually be able to get it done on Monday, but um, so what are your th thoughts about that? Going over if other people are interested, also, you know, yeah, pay as you go type classes on this or. Yeah, I'm. I'm thinking of. Um, I'm thinking of going uh, with two classes, where okay. I haven't decided on the evening class, but mm -hmm. um, to go with a, a morning class and evening class because honestly, like I really I like this group. I like what's coming out of our hands, mm -hmm. and um, we're getting a lot of work done in other classes um, when they get really big, and a lot of people have been saying they want to sign up for an evening class. Okay, um, good. So the evening class, you know, I, I don't get to paint. There's like smoke coming off my heels. <laughs> um, yeah. But uh, the morning class has been really wonderful. So I'd oh, like good. to run both. That's my thought right now. Yeah. Well, as I've said several times, just do it. You know, if you want to, that's that's fine with us. You know, if, even if we're not here or, you know, if it's something I don't sign up for, that's fine. Just, cool. um, yeah. But as far as this group with this class, I don't know if I'll finish this Monday, and if I don't, how, how do I handle this? Or, well, and, I'm thinking, and I don't think Winnie said she'll be done either. I, I don't think anybody in the whole group will be done. That's why, oh, good. Sorry, I, sorry I didn't uh, uh, address that specifically. So okay. I'd like to roll the same exact painting over to the next morning class. Same, same painting, you know, and if we all finish up like, um, so tomorrow, uh, I'm sorry, Monday would be okay. the last day uh, right. of the semester. But if we roll it to two or three more classes, I think that'd be great for everyone. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay, good. So, all right. So, yeah. Okay. Um, all right. So let me share the screen here. And um, here we go. I think, uh, tell me when the screen starts sharing. Okay, got it. So um, oh, I immediately different. thought of, I love, uh, this is Soroya's uh, Visions of Spain. It's the I cycle see. in, we, we have it in New York City, which is incredible that we really? have okay. Spain's pretty much, everyone thinks that Guernica and all those paintings by Picasso, which 
part, honestly, yes. like I actually, I love those paintings. Um, mm -hmm. Everyone thinks that those paintings are the heart and soul of Spain, but if Spain could redo history, they'd, they'd uh, get these paintings from us. <laughs> yes. So um, the, the interesting thing about this cycle of paintings is Soroya painted this massive canvas. This is, I think, 20 something feet wide. Oh my goodness. Wow. And he painted it outside. And when you stand in front of it, um, it in the whole room, I'm not saying any of the other paintings uh, did not succeed. I'm not saying that they failed mm -hmm. and this one mm -hmm. succeeded, but I am saying that this one has a unique quality of light to it mm -hmm. that feels like sun drenched in such a way that it's like, it's again, it's not my favorite one in the whole room. I, I don't want to say yeah. it's okay. better than worse, but in a way it has elements that make it my favorite. <laughs> so well, um, it's interesting how he composed it. The, um, the two men in the very center, you know, they're, they're not the brightest white, but they're the yellowest white. Yep. And compared to like the tuna and also the two sailors on the other side, those are yep. all in the same colors. Yet your eye is drawn to these sailors. Is it because yellow? I don't know why. Does it pop more forward than that bluish white? Yeah, I I think so. I think because the colors are hotter. Um, yeah. Okay. That like you see how the the color of the the water in the distance. Yes. Um, oh, I like love it, that. it would be it would be crazy for me to say Soroya wasn't a colorist. Like he was a colorist. Mm -hmm. His colors are phenomenal, but. If you think of Monet's, uh, the game that Monet was playing, Monet mm -hmm. was maybe you could say more of a colorist than Soroya. Yes. Okay. Um, but again, it's not saying Soroya's colors aren't brilliant. It's just that Soroya was what uh, nowadays art historians like to categorize him as a luminist. Okay. And to that category would belong John Singer Sargent, mm -hmm. um, Zorn, and a few others. And so the the strength of that light um on that water right there mm -hmm. um it's abs it's just amazing i mean it's it's in my opinion all the cools in the distance bring bring all the warmth uh much okay. more towards us you know what i mean okay yeah i'm writing it down cool. and so um i think i have a close-up yeah cool i have it uh look at that Look at that paint on there. It's just oh so gosh. buttery. It's delicious. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and that is, that's so true. You know, I've, I've finally gotten through my head light and dark in next to each other. But now I have to get into my head cool next to warm. Yep. And, and uh, you're saying something that I chime in with as well, because I have to get that into my head. Um, yeah. And John Trainer, who I really like his work, um, John Trainer was teaching, and in the lesson he was painting Stony Brook Harbor, and you probably heard me say this before, but he turned like the the tree line in the distance. It was like was a uh, the the neck of head of the harbor jutting out, and yeah. he, the whole tree line blue. I mean, it was like yes, yeah, really yeah. blue. And I yeah. I looked up and I saw green, and I was like, why did he do that? And, and yeah. he said, well, I need to send That's this away. Yes. But it was, it, was very, yeah, it was very contrived. I have to say it was very formulaic and but contrived. You know, and it, I, it's okay. It, that doesn't matter to me, you know, anymore. Be, and I wonder yeah. if it ever really, you know, maybe when I first started out, it really did mean a lot to get it exactly because I was, you know, trying to learn my skills. But yeah. now I think this is the next le level. Trying me too. to learn, um, uh, Going beyond what you see is really what this is. Going on what you've learned academically and now going into the, I don't know, if this would be the emotional level? I don't know. I, I, I'm entirely on the same page as you. Like literally, if somebody asked me to say, where are you at in your paintings? I would mm -hmm. say what you just said, where I used to look at these conventions and formulas and be like, ah, you know, that's that's for artists of old, but we're the modern artists in the sense that yeah. we don't need convention. But now I'm like, hey, look at the land. That feels like it's like, mm -hmm. you know, 15 miles away. And it's because he had conventions and stock ideas. 
You know, I have. A, oh, I'm sorry. I thought you were done. I get to well, <laughs> overexcited. Just, I guess. Go, no, I'm no, sorry. No. To cut you off. Go ahead. Here. So, so go ahead because that that was. My well, point. I'm I'm looking at that, and I noticed I went on your website to look for the colors you have, and I noticed well one, but I don't want to talk about it now. You don't have any greens. I thought that was interesting, and the other thing I see that you don't have alizarin crimson, or black, but alizarin crimson, and I was wondering. You know why? Because that that's good a, a good red to put things back. You know to send things yep. backward. Yep, totally. So here, here's the funny thing about. Uh, well, I'll start with green. So okay. because green is a secondary color. Um, yes. If I use viridian uh, or phthalo is is really strong. Yes. But I kind of I kind of become over dependent um, on a secondary color. Okay. And when I look out in front of me and I see like so much variety, I, mm -hmm. I like the idea of, okay, that, that Norwegian blue spruce really does look blue. And, yeah. you know, the weeping willow next to that is kind of like a, a paler yellow or green. Like, so it gives my eye more of, um, it challenged my, me to be a bit more nuanced. Okay. Whereas when I was younger and I used Viridian, um, it was, it was such a pleasing color that yes. it kind of accidentally took over. And then oh, I met, I probably know, I want to say I probably know 10 or 15 plein air painters, all of whom do not have a premixed green. Um, okay. Interesting. They, they won't use it because for the same exact reason, because if they can mix it up um, and see it with more nuance, uh, yes. they would prefer to do it that way. And it, and it, oh, okay. <laughs> Uh, along those lines, here's like a really funny thing. Um, it makes setting up and breaking down a whole lot easier. It's like, that's, oh. <laughs> well, that's when, important. When you have primarily primary colors, um, yes. you don't have to squeeze out like, you know, 18, 19 tubes of paint. Yes, yes. Oh, I kind of okay. have like okay. six or seven. So, okay. um, yeah, Mark yes. Alessio, he, he actually really encouraged me to steer away from Viridian. And okay. I like Mark's greens a lot. I, th I think they're very, they're like, sun-drenched. I really like his work uh, in that regard. Um, so then with Alizarin Crimson, um, I am terrible with Alizarin Crimson. And I, anytime I use it in a painting, it comes across as garish. It's like, it's okay. like a wild horse in the corral that I can't, like, control. <laughs> okay. okay. And Margaret, I'll never forget, in Italy... I glazed this leather book with alizarin crimson and I loved it. It looked so beautiful. And Margaret walks into the room. She's like, that really doesn't work with the rest of your color palette. Like it's like, it just, it's discordant. It doesn't work. And then the head of the school came in, this fellow Matt, and yeah. he walks in the door and he's like, he's like, holy alizarin crimson. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, Very cute. I, just don't know how to harness this color so maybe i should yeah. go back and, and play with it because all of my plein air friends use alizarin crimson i'm the okay. only guy who doesn't <laughs> so okay okay Good don't trust me on that one <laughs> okay so um so back to the idea of the the backlighting on the water here yes. and how highly keyed it is um uh, yes, we can yes. jump over to here and we can look at um, how backlit um, Evan is in this piece. Mm -hmm. And I have the black and white photo um, right here. Just give me a moment to pull it up. And it'd be great for you to, for you and I to look at the black and white photo. Okay. And just how strong the backlighting is mm -hmm. so that we can really, you know what, we can go with the color photo. We don't need to go with black and white. So here it is and should come through in a moment there we are okay and when you look at the the value structure um the lightest light is the light on his sleeve yes and then the light of uh, on his face is next to it mm -hmm. and actually i'm ignoring the boat for a moment okay. um and then the water would be third so it would go three two one Okay. In descending order from lightest to darkest. Um, so when when I look at that, what I think to myself is I want to do anything I can 
to get that value. And as time, you know, as, as you go along, you can glaze over these colors. Yes. And let's say you go for the color and it's, it, it's just a mismatch and it just doesn't feel like it's, it has the depth. Yeah. Um, you look at Soroya's paintings, I can tell when I look at his paintings that sometimes he must have four or five glazes over one passage mm -hmm. <clears throat> because he may have laid it down for an effect and then said, well, it doesn't really, you know, it just doesn't work in terms of color. So you can always glaze over something. Yes. Um, okay. I, ideally, we all hit these things the first time, but I, mm -hmm. as a painter, I've never been able to like hit things necessarily the first time. Okay. So... Um, jumping back to here, uh, as we look and let's let's pop that photo in there and put it right here. Whoops. And there we are. Okay, there we go. There. Okay, good. And let's even crop it mm -hmm. so that it's somewhat of a similar size. Yes, okay. Just like that. Um, and so going back again to that tree, the tree is, is totally working. The sun falling on it is totally working. And now if, if it were possible to grab the light on here and in grabbing that light to really try to fuse together the the two um, try to fuse together the two uh, forms that you have let's call the let me just select this right here and let me jump over here when Quinlan uh, draws on my iPad sometimes he changes all my settings for me <laughs> oh boy I, I have to like, I go back. get his own iPad yeah, right. <laughs> um, so check out how we can really pop yes, yeah. this off by going like this right here. Okay, okay. And then right now, as you had it, his back is light and the water is dark. But watch this. His back can become dark and the water can become light. I see what you're saying because that's the back of his shirt and it would be... And the back of his hair that's all the yep. sh uh, shaded side of his body exactly yep okay and this is all about this is where still life painting is really it's great for us as artists who are doing jumping to other genres because <laughs> when we learn these things and we learn light on dark dark on light um we we can use them so successfully in other areas where now evan's face the whole piece is becoming filled, like suffused with light. Okay. And Evan's face is going to pop off so much more. And your composition, mm -hmm. really, out of everyone in the whole group, your composition focuses, in my opinion, like the most on the child in the boat. Mm -hmm. Like, mine's a little bit more of like the sunlight hitting the boat, but yours is more of like kind of like the identity of the sitter. So like that right there and then we could even just put a tiny little piece of light here mm -hmm. okay and with that look at how the whole figure just emerges yes. right off yeah the canvas. yeah so um we didn't even change we, we literally haven't touched the figure of evan yeah. we haven't touched um you know anything regarding uh the boat the tree but mm -hmm. just backlighting that as we did, and the whole thing just pops right off. So that's my. Yeah. Okay. So I'll I'll hold off until Monday so I can do that with the group, I guess. Yep, I would say so. Okay. And okay. Because when you when you're there, uh, remember. So looking at the light in yes. the back of the tuna catch, and then mm -hmm. remember this moment right here. Yes. Um, and obviously, on a smaller painting, maybe we have reservations going with such thick impostos. But um, even charging up the paint, like this is a 20-foot wide canvas, so it can sustain massive swaths of paint. Um, but the 
the the the smaller paintings that we're working on still can take a, a volume of paint and that's where we're going to get that shine from you know what i mean yeah so cool so that's my thought and then the other uh observation just from nature itself is that yeah. it goes from light and then mm -hmm. the taper the taper goes from light to dark look at how much the color changes there. yes yes i know so, it's quite amazing so i mean that's right right down there that's pretty dark blue um mm -hmm. and then right up here it's pretty light and so i just put in like one mono um value because i don't right. really want to obviously get into the, the the subtle subtle distinctions of color but if you could as you work really try to get that gradient where it's quite light up at the top you know yes and then right. as yeah. it goes further down and there are these cool ripple patterns as well where it goes kind of left to right where you see the reflection you know like whoops <laughs> That's the wrong setting for a brush again. Um, so the ripple pattern right here, and you'll be able to do the same thing with the ripple pattern as this reflection meets the trees. Where are you, where are you talking about? Where the reflection meets, oh, there, okay. Yeah, there, there are these lots Oh, yes, 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 yes. Okay, I see what you're talking about now. I was looking down at the base of the boat and the, I was just oh, okay. looking at how still it is. I, I do that all the time when I teach and people are like, where are you? I have to remember that. <laughs> <laughs> um, so these little tiny ripple patterns. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, making them soft, we don't want them to be too sharp. No. Um, but then that, that makes it feel as if it's a still body of water with slight, you know, slight gentle breeze going over it. If the yeah. if water yeah. is, if water has no ripples, the one thing I've noticed is it kind of feels like a hot, hot summer day, like where oh, everything is still. Okay. So, um, so yeah, so those are, those are my thoughts. Okay. Um, that's great. So then, then, um, I'll know what to do when I start on Monday and yeah. how's the weather looking? I think it's going to be pretty good again. Yeah. It looks, I looked yesterday, oh, um, good. and I'm looking as I speak to you. It's looking um, like it could rain, um, so I guess we'll keep an eye on it. My my app that I use is wildly inaccurate, <laughs> so well, you know. Yeah, so I, I think. Yeah, I'll, no. Today I'll was supposed to be pretty miserable, according to my phone. Exactly. But, yep. But it's a gorgeous day, so I don't know. Yeah. Um, oh, Let's so see what I have. Okay. One one last thought with um with the light. Um, yeah. See the light on his back right here? Yes, yeah. I love that. It's like, in the whole painting, it's almost like my favorite passage, the light mm -hmm, like mm -hmm. landing on him and um, also on the fishes, but we can't see that. And you course. know, it's interesting also, the shadows, the folds, mm -hmm. which um, his folds, are the colors are very soft. You know, they're not harsh. Yep. He doesn't go, he doesn't... Um, go too far from the original color in yep. the folds. This, this other guy, yes, but, um, but even that one, yeah, even this one, the, the folds are not really as dark as I would, I would paint them, which is, he did a much better job. Yeah, I, I agree with you. I would have light, keeps in, he's keeping it very bright, keeping it very bright. Yeah, like I, I think like a studio painter, when you're indoors, you have less reflect, reflected light. Yeah. And so your folds are going to be dark. And it's just interesting. Soroya, they say, all the other students would get to the studio at like 9 a.m. And by 9 a.m., Soroya had already done a full painting outdoors. And they just said he was such a different student because he knew that the rules changed when you went outdoors. And so he had to become a disciple of painting the figure out there. And uh, I had, had a funny thing happen with Mark D'Alessio where I was painting Liam in Stony Brook Harbor. And we had a really nice time painting together. And um, after we wrapped up, I said, you know, I want to get better. And 
what, what are your thoughts, like uh, tips for like painting the figure outdoors and getting better? And you know what he said to me? No. He, he just goes, do it more often. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's right. It was so dry. I loved it. It was yes. kind of like a slap in my face and I loved it. Um, yeah, wake up, boy. What do you think? <laughs> yeah. So um, the, the charged paint that, you, that we saw right there, I think yeah. you can go in and you can also charge the light on the inside of the boat and really yes. let that okay. light be like, let, let this light right here um, be the lightest light um, other than the sleeve and other than the <clears throat> bit of light on his face. But um, yeah. that will really um, make the painting just glow. Like it, it will transform it when, because you have the base for it, you have the foundation. Yes. Yeah. And now yeah. you okay. want to just get a little bit more aggressive and okay. put paint down with uh, gusto right there. Now I'm wondering if I look at Soroya's and then I look at mine, um, we, have, we have two whites there. Should that rowboat, the inside, be a cooler white and, and make Evan's shirt a warmer white? Yeah, it's a good I... question. I, um, uh, my eye, this is the white of the shirt. It yes. is, so, is so close to pure white. I yes. almost see it as being pure white, touched with his smallest, tiniest bit of yellow. Um, okay. And then the boat, to my eye, is, has just much more cream in it. Yes, it um, does. So th that's my thought. Um, but I would, I think really the most important thing is just pushing them apart from each other. All right. Um, because nobody knows if Evan's wearing a pale blue shirt. So let's say right. you went right. and you made the light on his shirt, like kind of like, kind of like a faint pale blue. No, right. Nobody would ever know. Um, yes, yeah, yeah. So... I do that all the time, especially in still life painting. Mm -hmm. I push colors apart um, unnaturally. And then people, it's funny because my friend Matt, who he, he has a really, his father is arty. He's a faux finisher. Yeah, Matt, yeah. yeah, they have great eyes for color. And Matt said to me with this one painting, it was an ax with all wood being split um, that was sold to a collector in California. And he said, I love those colors. They're so like, warm but they're like muted but they're harmonious yeah. and he's like where where are those objects so, and i like pointed to my suit it's like they're right in front of you he's like they're totally different i was like yeah but i wanted to paint the atmosphere not okay. necessarily chase after yeah and he was like it was cool it was like a moment where he's like oh you can do that <laughs> so yeah well so i thought i'd uh said, let you yeah. jump in over here oh, okay all right, I put in a little bit of the um, uh, sunlight on the table. Actually, I worked on the table a bit. I blocked off um, where the wall is on the table and the back of the table also. And then I put at the front of the, t you know, the front of the table, I put some of the, the reflected light going down also. So I, I really don't, other than um, cleaning it up, cleaning up the lines, I was wondering if I should add some more intense white in the upper, on the ball, on the sphere, on the right side, where there's a, a little blue now, but put a, a, a bigger streak of blue or triangle maybe following the shape of the... Are we talking about right there? Yeah, below that perhaps, making a... You know what, let me bring the paint, painting up and then if I can show you on there with my finger. Okay, so let me, uh, I'm gonna switch over on the screens here. What's that funny noise? The noise? Yeah. It's uh, leaf blowers in my neighborhood. Oh, okay. I thought it was something to do with your computer. All right, here we go. Let's hope I can get this here. Okay, I tried to place this so I could. Can you see it? Mm -hmm. Good. Okay. Oh, actually, it dropped low. For a second, I thought it was going to be higher. 
Um, I can make it. I can put it up higher. Great. More than that? Yeah, maybe by like uh, a third of the painting. <clears throat> oh, okay. Yeah, there we are. That will. Better? Yep, that's good. Yep. Okay. All right. So I was thinking, you know how this has this curve? Do yep. here like that in um, a bright white. Yep. Or, and then you know, because you always see it on the opposite side, perhaps let's see, this would be here. So maybe here? Oops. Yes. Yeah. So the smaller. You're, you're exactly like, so my thought with yeah, a painting yeah, yeah. is um, kind of in the realm of uh, Escher. And we also looked at, I think, Peter Kleiss, and he had a painting of that sphere. Oh, okay. Um, I think that I think that the painting at this point will will really be uh, pushed forward by just exactly what you're saying, going specific. Okay. And I would even like like right now that the everything is kind of broad brushed in, but yes. then I get smaller brushes out for like everything from the reflections to the window to the foliage. Oh, um, okay. And I I get um really specific but specific you know doesn't mean individual leaves but um the shape of the foliage like just going i guess what i'm saying is going from broad and yes. and just focusing down focusing down and giving us so almost just, too much oh, information okay hmm. yeah hmm. I, now i'm a little stymied a little confused so um okay so maybe these areas here which are kind of brought to the center, make those look more like individual leaves, little yeah. branches, individual branches and, and leaves. Exactly. Um, do you mind if oh. I pull up a, a drawing quickly? No, nope, go ahead. I so can write this, this down too. This is, um, um, and I'll send this picture over to you. Um, Rex, Picot, Cole, drawing, tree. Um, and Rex Picot Cole was, he, he, he wrote the book, Drawing uh, the Artistic Anatomy of Trees. And okay. I just, I love his work because he, I don't know, he's like one part scientist, one part artist. Um, okay. And the one doesn't dominate the other. He's just, I just really love, like his work can be very expressive and honestly like very abstract. Like if you look at that right there. Yes. Um, he he really was i don't i'm not saying he's specifically from the generation of turner uh but he was of that mindset of that world where if you, do you see the abstract of these little trees yes um they're very they're broad but even like what we call these are called sky holes the areas where the light can comes through the trees yes um the sky holes are so interesting and that's kind of what I'm thinking with your piece. Like I, I'm not specifically saying this drawing. So don't, yes, don't, okay, you know. yeah, okay, but, no, no, I understand. But there's this really neat balance between um, enough information, where there's a lot of calligraphy going on with the trunks, mm -hmm. and yet there are no, there's not really one individual leaf in the whole entire drawing. It's. Mm -hmm. It, they're all hazy and they're messed in. So like, I think this idea will really push your, your painting further because right now we have the hazy, but without the specific. Yes, you know yes. What I mean? So um, that's kind of my thought. Like I'm just leafing through all the different um, images so that you can see how he's done this. Like this is more of a, a broad effect. So, again, um what I see more that he has is he has more of the stem and the trunks in there. Yep. And, and even if, if not, if you're going more of the silhouette, um, yes. like this, this right here, still there's specific enough information that we, we know what's going on. Like I'm, I'm thinking of exactly like right there. We yes. See yeah. Yeah. There's very okay. little yeah, information. Yeah, I think that, I got that. I understand. I, I understand what you're saying to do. Okay. 
So I'm, I'm not even at the point then of putting the white, uh, I gotta hold back still. No, no, I would put the white in. Uh, that's what I was saying. Yes. I, think, oh. I think we're on a similar wavelength with where you should go. Um, but the white like, is, is kind of light coming through the trees. And to do that, I would just oh. really design in what the tree oh, wow. is. Because yeah. uh, this right here is, is a classic example. It's, we're talking about negative space. Yes. And the light coming through in that negative space. Um, so I guess what I'm saying is, go ahead and put the white in. But to put the white in, think about what your positive space is. Yeah. And that will help you. Interesting. Okay. I understand. Boy, this is getting complicated. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I don't understand what you're saying. I have, uh, like here, in, so in some way, right here, I did that. Yep. But, it does, but it's kind of still in the abstract. Yep. Um, yeah. So I should put perhaps... Um, hmm. Well, that's the sky, but if it were the white reflection there, I would still need to put the tree in front of it. Huh. Yeah, like somehow. Oh, yay, yeah, yay. Yeah. Okay, okay. Somehow, like carving it out where um, you could even do a drawing of a tree, like with with the side of, um, do it on, on paper. Yeah, I think I'll. Do the whole drawing of the tree with your pencil like this. Yeah. And ho hold it sideways the whole time so that you don't get into the linear world where you're get, going in specific. But go just do kind of like a mass thin drawing yeah. with the okay. side of your pencil. And yeah. then when you have that drawing, imagine you're taking it and you're taking a piece of paper and you're wrapping it around that right. sphere. And I think that will help you. Um, that's, mm -hmm. that's the approach I would, I would well, just you know, have. Also, I'm thinking the, the, re light, the reflected light coming in is actually going to stop here at the, the top of the table because wouldn't it be yep. blocked? Yep. So really I would only have a reflected bright, you know, white. I don't know what shape it would be. Say, say, say the triangle for argument's sake, but it would maybe yep. not, not come to a complete point, but just get narrower here, but stop because of the, the yep. table blocking it and the, you know, the window frame. Yep. But then on this side, if it's a reflection of this, it would show you the complete shape coming to a point. Yep. But yeah, it would. It would. And, and, that's, and that's where you're just, like sometimes I, I get to a point in a painting um, where I just have to push the ideas further. Mm -hmm. I just literally just need yeah, to yeah. elaborate. But, yeah. um, well, that's what I think I I'm going to do is just get a circle on a piece of paper and small, do some little thumbnail sketches of this so I can, um, you know, maybe with uh, colored pencils or something to just see how it's starting to look. Yep. Because so this is like a whole entire painting in here. It, it is. And that's a big canvas. And that's a whole painting. I mean, I know we, I know we already looked at Peter Kleiss and that painting he did of that glass sphere. But yeah, um, what was his name again? Do you want me to uh, send it over to you? Sure. All right, so uh, just one moment, I'll pull it yep. up. And just, it's so interesting to look at how specific he went. I mean, that's oh, a lot. Yeah, of, yeah, yeah. And that oh, really yeah, is, yeah, yeah. That oh, really is what, I, what I think for you. Um, yeah. where it's Oops. like, let's go insert a file. There we go. But you know, um, where's my son? <laughs> it is coming. Interesting. I really have to study his work because maybe it would be a, instead of the, the bottom of the tape, I have to do a lot of little studies. I can see that. Yeah, and I'm I'm just popping that right next to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's good. Um, because I have to see where his light is coming from, and where my light is coming from. Yep. And then, yikes. So I mean, 
I, this is the point at which, in my opinion, it gets fun. Yes. Um, <laughs> I, I like it when a painting, like I've laid not only the foundation, yeah. you know, I've put things on top of it and then it's, you know, little weird rogue elements can find their yeah. way. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah, wow. Hmm. Huh, and um, and a, as you're putting this in, um, as you're getting the different ideas, if you hit like a roadblock, just yeah. jump somewhere else in the painting. Like um, yeah. jump over to the window and then mm -hmm. double back to the sphere, jump over here, jump back. Yeah. Um, so like, that's the way that I work because sometimes I just hit these like, like mental impasses where I, <laughs> I can't really, okay. can't really elaborate too much more. So I'm like, okay, I'll yeah. just go elsewhere. Now, Kevin, um, oh, I forgot what I was going to say. Oh, uh, as far as, you know, because that, I, I think before I can do anything, I need to do a lot of little studies for that one, which will be mm -hmm. fun, I hope. <laughs> but as far as the background, the table, the window, um, that's pretty well set. I, I just would need, I guess, to clean it up a bit, or what, what do you think I need to do with that? Just moving away from the globe. Yep, I think, um, let me move the globe actually physically. Yeah, okay. But I'm um, glad you sent that to me again because, um, you know, so I'm going to have to study where he has the light coming in because this is up the upper left-hand corner. Mine is really the center yeah. lower quadrant. So I have to figure out how to transpose my um, light coming in a little better. Um, and yeah, they are very I, different. Yeah. So we can, take, we can take notes and cues, but uh, it's yes. a diff it is, but, but yours is backlit, yeah. his is yes. sidelit. Um, I'm wondering, uh, okay, one question, you know, where I have this, I don't know if you can see it again, this really maybe should be, if you want to bring it, okay. All right, this right here should be, I would think the white. What's that? It should be Would whiter? Would this be the white? Because this is the reflected glass of, of the sun coming in? Compared I would, to... You could, play, you could play with all the thoughts yeah, like that. Where... Yeah, I'm wondering, because like he has the whole window. Yeah. Yeah, I've got to do a lot of playing. I've got to do a lot. Yeah, like, I... I, when I, need, I, a, I need to have a group consultation on this thing. Where's Peter? <laughs> That's that's where like um I started that little Facebook group and I haven't really tended to that fire. Yeah. But um I wanna have this forum where we can post things and then we all just you know, if we want feedback we can get it. If we don't want it, we don't have Yeah, to I'd love it. it. I'd love it. Because I'm at the you know, I'm at the age where I just I wanna have a good painting and I'm I'm not I don't have any um ideas about a career or fear of sharing. You know, it's just a nice way to get together with people for me. Totally. And, and I, there's freedom in that. <laughs> I think uh, I think that ironically produces the best work because you stop thinking, and I'm speaking of myself here, when I, when I yeah. think to myself, hey, this has to equal, you know, a, a monetary return, um, mm -hmm. sometimes that can close the engines to seize up. So yes. the abandon that comes with, hey, I'm just enjoying this. Ironically, I find those pieces sell quicker. <laughs> so that's the irony. Um, mm -hmm. yep. But um, yeah, I would play with the light that you were just talking about. And then as far okay. as the window sill and the table, mm -hmm. I, I don't know why, but my eye is just really not concerned or preoccupied because I think I'm so fixated on that sphere. Yes. That when you figure when you push that along further then all of a sudden it's gonna be like oh obviously this with the window that with the window okay. um okay. so that's a thought that i have okay so I would just, yeah let it be for a while okay okay yep all right okay all right, cool. that's exhausting well, um, i don't know about you but i think i need to go back for a nap <laughs> yeah <laughs> i have um, after somebody gives me a critique, I feel like I always need to like go take a walk. Like it's like <laughs> I I just like my brain feels like like an overflowing 
like a sponge yeah. that just tried to take in too much. So uh, yeah. Yeah. I'll put this video up on um, on YouTube so that you can uh, watch it. Okay, that'd be great. That's good. That's working out really well, by the way. So nice, nice. Uh, okay, so so now I I got a lot to do. <laughs> Nowhere near. Yeah, but it's anyway, it's, it's wonderful. Cool.